On today's episode of Reaping Equity, I am sitting down with Sergeant Passamano, our school's student research officer, to discuss the problem of prescription drug abuse in New Jersey. Kids are majorly impacted by drug use, especially in New Jersey. As a state, we have the sixth highest fatal drug overdose in the country in young kids. 70% of New Jersey teens say that the prescription drugs that they abuse are accessible through family members and friends. 10.7% of deaths in people from ages 12 to 25 occurred because of a drug overdose. According to an article done by CBS News, during the pandemic, the mortality rate from overdoses skyrocketed to 100,000 Americans in one year. This number largely increased because addicts were not provided with adequate treatment due to the pandemic. The number of deaths due to drug overdoses is now larger than deaths caused by car crashes, guns, and even the flu and pneumonia. Statistics show that most deaths were caused by an opioid called fentanyl. New Jersey was one of the only four states whose death toll from overdoses did not increase. So, what, do you, what does the Lindhurst Police Department do to aid community members struggling with addiction to prescription drugs? So, we have a, a problem in this area, and we do educational programs for our uh, high school students here. We talk about prescription pills, uh, heroin, fentanyl. Um, we're also uh, part of uh, a group in Bergen County, which is called the HEART Program. that uh, helps people with addiction. So, a lot of things are... Um, not chargeable at this point where we're out here looking to help others not looking to hurt them and put them in jail so we're trying to help them and, and get them the help they need all right what do you do as a school resource officer to aid students and their families in dealing with addiction um so what we do here is we have a program called not even once what we do for the junior health class and uh, i bring officers and a recovery specialist is somebody who's battling an addiction who's recovered and now is teaching so we bring them in and uh, we help educate students about the dangers of uh, prescription pills, which ultimately could lead to a heroin addiction, which is a lot worse. How long have you been doing this program for? The uh, program is now in four years, and uh, we're, we're going through now after COVID, we're coming back into it. We just held our first uh, class two weeks ago, um, and it's a, it's a good way for us to get in there and have these conversations and hope that we avoid these, uh, these addictions. What laws are in place to prevent the abuse of prescription drugs? Um, there's a lot of big laws that, that hold the uh, uh, pharmacies and doctors accountable. Uh, we have we see a lot of issues with that. Um, so we, we do, uh, there's definitely a lot with our DEA, FBI, they, they do a lot of uh, drug prevention and try to keep that from getting into the wrong hands and keep them off the streets. All right, that makes sense. Um, can you explain how and why the prescription drug abuse epidemic arose? Uh, yeah, I think it's it was becoming uh, overprescription. Uh, people were getting overprescribed pills, and uh, they were forming an addiction quite pretty fast from it. Mm -hmm. So when they were taking the prescriptions for an injury, uh, they would get the prescription. They would take the uh, prescribed amount. They would abuse it, uh, which would create uh, a want for more pills. Uh, and when they couldn't get the pills, they would turn actually to uh, to heroin, which is a cheaper alternative. I think a part of it too is like um, environment and like the place that you kind of grow up in because I feel like if especially if families aren't enforcing the importance of like staying away from those kind of things and like abusing drugs I feel like we're still going to have this issue so I feel like a lot of it is like making sure that parents are staying on top of that. Yeah a lot of it too socially emotional there's a lot of um, depression anxiety um, where people get to use uh, these prescriptions or abuse the prescriptions or take pills to uh, help them with their day-to-day -day. and a lot of times it does get abused and unfortunately it leads to a worse addiction. Yeah. Um, what age group and gender do you think is most affected by prescription drug addiction? Uh, I believe from the stats that I've seen, I think it's mostly males, uh, more males. Uh, the target age is right around uh, anywhere from 18 to like 27 years old Bye. is where we're seeing the most addiction. It's right after high school where you're making decisions that can affect your life, either college or going to the work field. Uh, field. And I see that uh, that becomes the most stressful uh, part of your life and or you're losing your job or a lot of things are happening so people are turning to drugs as an alternative. Um, why do you think this group is especially susceptible to prescription drug addiction? Um, I guess it's just because it, it's it's an outlet to get away from some of the things and the stress of life mm -hmm. and uh, you know a lot of times we don't have coping mechanisms in place that, that help us uh, getting as we get older mm -hmm. and when we get into that, that prime age right after high school and in between college 
uh, there's there's a lot that can go wrong, and sometimes when it does, uh, prescription pills are are used to cope with that, and it becomes an abusive uh, thing, and we have uh, problems with overdose and uh, addiction. Yeah. What can be done to keep kids from getting addicted to prescription drugs? I think it's education. I think it's having the conversations at home. I think it's starting at the high school level, uh, talking to them about going to parties, being careful what they put into their body, what they're offered. Um, I think it's just having an outlet, having an alternative, uh, you know, yoga or sports or something that you can kind of get your release and, and can use for your personal you know, to help you with uh, any problems that you might be having and stress-related and, um, and not turning to uh, a pill and just kind of coping with things. Do you guys still do D.A.R.E.? Because I know that when I was in middle school, mm-hmm. I had seminars, like, I think yearly. Yeah, we do. So it's called LEAD now. It's called the Law Enforcement Against Drugs. Mm-hmm. It's a new one. We do it for fifth grades. It's the introduction to it. I, I try not to go too young with the with the students. Mm-hmm. Um, I think fifth grade's pretty good as an introduction at that, hey, these things are out there and, it, and it's very dangerous. And then as we get into uh, later on, middle school, high school, we kind of go into it a little more deeper. And then when I bring that recovery specialist, somebody who actually is recovering from an addiction, uh, it makes it real. And then they get to hear their story and how it happened. Yeah, I remember, uh, I forget who they brought in, but they brought someone in and like they talked about like their um, experience with drugs. Mm -hmm. And like I have a past of like addiction in my family so it was like really interesting to hear someone else who like experienced the same thing yeah it's it's in this area it's a lot i think it's it's more often than what we think and and i think a lot of us are going through one person that you know at least one person i think everybody knows at least someone who's battling an addiction and uh you know until you have the conversation you realize that you're not alone and that there are um resources and outlets that are available to you and family members that are struggling as well with it uh, to help get through it. What do you think we can do as students to prevent like our friends from using prescription drugs? Um, I think we just hold each other accountable and uh, we look out for one another. We educate ourselves and uh, we take a stance early that yeah. we're not going to we take a pledge. You know, We're not going to stand for this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to put this, these kind of things in our bodies and we're going to stand against it and stay, you know, know that there's other alternatives. Yeah. Well, thank you, Officer Passamano, for allowing me to interview you, because I think this is a really big issue, mm-hmm. and I know you're going to be the most knowledgeable about it because you're our student resources officer. Yeah. Um, and this is Ari Stumer signing off.